Now, before we get into Hal's questions on system design, following up on that, somebody wrote a comment on, I think it was the stock charts channel or possibly uh, my channel. They said that the QQQ COVID TFM sell signal was as bad as it gets. Why use it now for a buy signal? Well, let's take a look at that. So here was your COVID, so to speak, pandemic sell signal in the queues. And the market dropped 20% from that signal. So you got to ask yourself, as I'm going to kind of reiter reiterate a lot tonight, is is that a bad signal or designer's intent? Well, the, the design of the system was, of course, to, to get you in markets when they go up. But the main initial designer's intent was to get you out of markets and keep you out of trouble. And knock on wood, so far, this has done really, really well, especially in the S&P 500 going all the way back to the 1900s. And that's what I did all the testing on. And it's just a simple, simple, simple system. In fact, it's just, this is 10% of the 50 week closing high, which is the closing high would be right there. I know everybody's eyes are glazing over, but to those new to my YouTube, channel or my website it's 50 week closing high less 10 percent and then the 50 week moving average is down here this is the weekly chart and it's it my intent was to design a longer term trend following system and by accident i didn't realize it would actually get a, get you out of the market as quick as it does when the market begins to come unglued a little bit now it did have a subsequent buy and the market made this v-shape recovery and that's one thing that i did learn with the system is if you have a more gradual type of recovery or bottoming process like 2007 2008 and then what was the other bottom 2002 2003 then the the buy line or the 10 percent line does catch up with price and that worked out kind of nicely recently and we'll get to that in just one second so technically that was a whipsaw because it got you out here then it got you back in here okay so you might say well that's what good is that well what good is that is you were able to sleep at night and i remember after this you know and i know you people here are probably tired of me saying this but i remember after that signal triggered and i got out of the market being mostly getting out of the market for me means uh hitting stops on my initial positions and then possibly looking to short some stuff but i definitely don't want to be long indices when I have a sell signal, which is such a major sell signal like this, or something like a weekly bow tie or something like that. And even daily bow ties off of all time highs or something that you might want to pay attention to. But anyway, long story endless, as I said before, I remember a friend of mine was visiting as this thing continued to implode. And he was literally like white in the morning when he saw how much stocks had dropped again overnight. So there's, there's a sleeping factor that comes in when you're, timing the market or using market timing and, and a lot of people say it cannot be timed well you could certainly miss some really ugly times in the market now if the market just goes straight up for five years you would be much better off just being long and a system like this would get you long and you would pretty much be long but let's say during that five-year period you had a couple of spills then longer term it looks like well why bother getting out well why bother getting out is to avoid those occasional diaper change moments. And again, that was the designer's intent, borrowing a line from Ian McActivy. Now, he's like, he was saying, why take why take the latest buy signal? Well, look what the last buy signal did. The market went up 66%. Now, you could argue, well, it was a little late to get back in the market. And it was because you had a V-shaped recovery, but there were other things around that time that began to trigger and began to it, when the market began to improve especially like on a daily chart there's daily bow ties on things of that nature but you could see 66 percent until this sell signal here which gets you out of the market and then the market dropped 27 percent okay so that should get you pretty excited i'm not trying to sell you in the system because i'll give it to you <laughs> but you can see it kept, it kept you out of the market for nearly all of 2022 and almost half of 2023, or a few months, I should say, at least four months of 2023. So that's a long time, a year and change to be out of the market. 
and it's a pretty good time to be out of the market. And I don't want to back into this too much, but a lot of the buy and hope type of people will tell you, well, if you missed the if you missed the 10 greatest days, then your performance isn't that good. So you have to be in the market all the time. It's like, well, what if you missed the 10 worst days? And a lot of that type of apologetic analysis comes from Greg Morris. And if you look uh, look at his book, Investing with the Trend, he turns a lot of that stuff on its head. You can go to davelander.com slash books dash two dash read for more on that. Uh, the, the books to read, that is. But anyway, uh, most of your ugly days happen when the when you have some sort of momentum momentum signal to the downside, such as it violating the 10% line and also closing below that 50-week moving average. Uh, in 1987, you had a crash. Soon after it did that, in 1929, you had a crash. Soon after it did that, the market doesn't always crash, though. Sometimes you will get a false signal. And sometimes you get a whipsaw, and that could be a little frustrating if you're following a system. But where you, you can take solace is in the fact that when you're down 27% from the exit, you can sleep like a baby while everybody else is getting a little bit panicky. Anyway, there's a subsequent buy signal up about 6% from there. When I did this screenshot, I think we closed a little bit higher. But I was up about 20 points from the buy signal that I, I took on this. So just 100 shares. But, you know, here's the thing. This is a testament for longer term trading. And I know it's too early to start kissing each other just yet on this signal. But $2,000 is nothing to sneeze at for sitting in an ETF for a couple of months. Anyway, I'm a nerd, but I think all this stuff is pretty cool. So uh, as far as designer's intent, it's acting like it should, and I think it's acting good. What I would encourage this gentleman to do is look at all signals versus just cherry picking one. And even if he just look back to the last buy signal and the last sell signal, he should have been pretty impressed. And then the sell signal before that again with a pandemic with a 20% slide, that's that's a big haircut. I mean, let's say you got a million dollars in stocks, that's two hundred thousand dollars. Okay. And let's say that's all you have and you're retired and you 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 still want that growth in stocks. So you got a million dollars and all of a sudden you're out two hundred thousand dollars. It's gonna take you a long time to recover that. And what's the um if you draw down 20%, what's it take to get back to break even? Let's say you go down 20%, 100, let's say 80 times. If you make back 20%, now you're gonna make back like 25% or 30%. And then it goes geometric from there. Anyway, so be careful just looking at uh one or two signals versus cherry picking one. And as I often preach, and I'll, I'll say it a couple more times tonight, you want to play devil's advocate when you're looking at any system. So this guy is, is doing the right thing by questioning it, but he needs to go in and look at every single signal. Ask yourself, is the system performing to the designer's intent? Again, borrowing a line from Ian McActivy, the, the idea was to have a system to help you avoid diaper change moments. A diaper change moment and the NASDAQ in the in the 19 in the 2000 actually would have been a 77% slide in the Great Depression. It would have been an 80 or 90% slide. So you want to be out of the market when these really bad things happen. And that's the designer's intent, so to speak, although it does show merit on the long side too. So make sure you know the designer's intent if you're looking at somebody's stuff. And hopefully I do a good job of doing that. So the question is, what's your process? Well, I'll look at charts. I look at lots and lots and lots of charts. And as I often say, study the genuine article. Every night when I'm going through my 2000 stocks, any stock that takes off, the first thing I do is I go in and, and look at it and say, okay, is there a pattern there where I could have caught the move? And I noticed that John, our resident IPO expert on the, on the in Facebook, does the same thing when he sees one take off he starts kind of noodling with it a little bit and that's that's how you do it that's exactly how you do it john and others but uh find stocks that look really good 
and you know, study past his past winners too. You can go to DaveLearn.com slash archives and go through those stocks there if you have the time and look at these are all the service stocks I recommended over the last 20 years or so. Go in and look at those and see which ones really worked out well and see what common characteristics they have. And then, you know, maybe look at some stinkers too and play devil's advocate and say, well, could should he have taken this setup to begin with? There's lots of noodling and what ifs and like I'll notice just something simple like, and I hate to use the word candles, but I guess I'll use it. <laughs> but the real bodies of candles sometimes stack up. So I think there's something there. I've been calling it stackers and I've been, been kind of noodling with that a little bit. I haven't come up with anything, but it is kind of a cool thing when you get this little stack happening. So that's just something I noticed probably over the last year or whatever. The more you look at charts, the more you're you're going to start to see these reoccurring pattern. 